Welcome back to Freedom Finance with Lanny, guys. We're going to talk today actually about saving money. If you're a new investor or if you're just starting out in your personal finance journey, an easier way to start is just by saving money and to use that savings and to start investing. And, you know, before we start diving into more videos on how to produce more income, how to develop side hustles, and how to create just income in general, Let's get back down into some savings, into some blocking and tackling here, because I want you guys to be able to maximize as much of your money as possible, to be able to invest as much money as possible, to create additional assets and additional income sources as much as possible. So I'm going to go through five ways how I save money close to $10,000 a year compared to others. And essentially, I'm using that $10,000, almost $1,000 a month to invest in the stock market or other assets to get to that financial freedom, guys. So if you're interested in my five ways on how I'm saving almost $10,000 a year, you've come to the right place. So grab your beer, grab your liquor, grab your wine, because you're Italian, you got a beard, and you're with me here this weekend on a Sunday. Or it's actually Saturday, guys. But let's dive in into the five ways on how I save almost $10,000. Let's get it. start guys again this sometimes won't work for everybody but i'm going to tell you what's worked for me i'm going to tell you and analyze how i'm spending my money here how i'm saving my money and how maybe what i'm spending could be useful for how you could spend and maybe that'll equate to some savings for you you know the first place we're going to start is actually (laughs) I'm recording this on my cell phone. I'm recording this on my Samsung Galaxy. I don't know if it's the S22 or not. Um, I think that's the model I have, but let's talk about my cell phone. Let's talk about the cell phone plan. This is really the first area where I feel like it's the easiest way to start saving money almost immediately. And, you know, about seven years ago, I used to have Horizon. Love Great, great company, you know, great coverage, great cell phone provider, right? If you're watching this video, maybe you have Verizon as well. Well, how much do you pay per month on average per line? At the time, I began about seven years ago, I was paying about $65 to $75 a month for my phone line. And I wanted to save money. I wanted to use that extra savings, even if it meant 20, 30, 40, 50 extra dollars a month to use that to buy some more assets, to buy some more stocks, to buy some more dividend stocks, to produce more passive income. I wanted to put my money into something that's going to put more money back into my pocket. I ended up switching. And again, my link to this phone plan is in the description in case you're interested in saving money as well. I switched my phone plan. I switched it to Google FI. Google has a phone plan, yes. And the cool part about Google FI is it runs on two bands, so it connects to pretty much whatever the best tower or network is available. My phone's a dual band phone, so it works on any network essentially. And you're probably curious, how much do I pay a month? On average, I pay between $23 to $25 per month. I actually don't even have an unlimited data line, um, but I don't use that much data. Why? Because I'm always on Wi-Fi. So always think of that too. Are you on Wi-Fi or are you on data a lot? So there's a lot of different plans out there. So we'll just call it, I spent about 25 a month. And the wild part is, is I just Googled what the average cost of an average phone plan is. It seems like it's like well over 100 a month. But for conservative purposes, I'm going to say it's about 75. So I'm saving about $50 a month, $600 a year. Wouldn't that be nice to just instead take that $50 a month and invest it into something like the S&P 500 ETF, VOO? That's essentially the whole strategy here. So switch your phone plan. My link to Google FI is down in the description below. Um, It's definitely saved me thousands of dollars since I have switched. You could probably argue somewhere in the range of four to five grand, uh, maybe even more. Um, So let me know what your phone plan is. But let's get into number two, guys. Another one that you could really do immediately. One that you could start saving now. And again, you could use that savings to invest. The whole goal is to earn, save, invest. 
buy that income, guys. Take that active income, save your money, and buy assets that produce passive income. And so the second thing you know, that saves me money and can save you money instantly is your food budget. You know, I searched and it looks like around $1,000 is what people spend for a family of four. Well, I'm a family of three and we spend about $250 a month. So a family of four, and this might be right up your alley, you might be spending $250 a week or $1,000 a month. We only spend about $250 a month. And I think the biggest, biggest component of that the biggest benefit that we're getting right now is by shopping at Aldi and Trader Joe's. And then we shop around for other sales when we see them. But we're going to conservatively conservatively say that we save about $100 a month by shopping at Aldi and Trader Joe's. But again, that's being super conservative. But we'll say, for argument's sake, we save about $1,200 a year by buying the same products elsewhere at Aldi. You know, your milks, your peanut butter, your eggs, um, your cereals, your oats, your fruits, and your vegetables. So that's where I think $1,200 a year in savings that we're getting. And it probably and could be more, but I'm going to be very conservative, similar to the phone plan. So right now we're looking at about $1,800 in savings for the year between the phone and the food. How much do you guys spend per person, per week, or per month? Or what's your household food cost look like? Again, we're about 250 a month. The next area that saves me, I'm going to just say kind of probably saves me around, we'll call it $300 a year, um, is I shut my insurance every year to make sure I'm at the best rate. Now, I haven't switched my provider in quite a few years because it always comes up being the best one, the plan that I currently have. But shop your home insurance and your auto insurance every single year. And if you rent, your renter's insurance as well. You got to protect your money. They're not looking out for your money. They're trying to maximize their profit. So you need to maximize your household profit. So I'm going to argue by just doing that, I'm saving around $500, you know, at max, but probably $300 a year at a conservative estimate. So we're around $2,100 for the year between these three items, the phone, the food, the insurance. That's three items. I have two more. The next one's big, guys. The next one really comes down to your car and your vehicle expenses. I found out, it kind of made me, gosh, you know, I feel terrible for everybody that is, you know, having to have to finance a car. Because the average auto loan payment right now on a new car, per the searching that I just did, is about $730 a month. For a used car, it's about five hundred thirty a month. So we'll say, on average, it's about six hundred dollars per month that people are spending on their car payment. Does that sound about right? Let me know in the comments. I haven't had a car payment since twenty seventeen. I've owned my car now for eleven total years. It's got one hundred sixty seven thousand miles. Ah, my good old Honda Accord, baby, and I hope to drive it for at least another eleven years. Now, I'm going to argue that because not having the payment and my insurance being very low because it's a paid car, it's a Honda Accord, and it's an old car, um, that I'm saving around $600 per month by having a low maintenance, no, no debt, and a very conservative car. So that's $7,200 a year adding into that $2,100 a year I'm already saving. So we're at $9,300 a year, not having any of these items. Wouldn't you be very happy with almost an extra $800 per month at this point to invest? And again, take out the car, $2,100 in savings is almost $200 a month. You could be a millionaire if you were able to invest that every single month for a long period of time. The throw in not having a car payment and a low maintenance conservative car, you're well on your way, guys. So there we have it. We got the fifth item now coming up. And it's small. It's a little nugget. It's streaming, guys. You know, again, how many streaming services do you have in your household right now? Can you count them on one hand, hopefully? 
you know, the studies were done that there's about four streaming services now per household um, that people are paying for. Four. In our house, we have two. We have Netflix. We have Amazon Prime. I'm considering Amazon Prime because it comes with the Amazon, you know, video, I guess, whatever you want to call it. A couple good shows on there. I did watch the movie Roadhouse. You know, let me know what you guys thought about that movie. Um, so we have two. But the two that we have even, you know, would probably, you could probably argue we spent about 30 a month. Because we share it, you know, with some family members, we're probably around $20 a month in what we spend on streaming services. And can I conservatively say that having four, you spend about 60 a month? Does that sound about right to you? Are you spending $60 a month um, in your house on streaming services? We'll use that as a benchmark, that $15 a month for each service. So we're saving around $40 a month or an extra $480 per year, guys. Um, so there we have it. You know, essentially, you've got the auto, you got the insurance, you got the food, you got the phone, and you got the streaming services. Adding these up all together, you're pretty much right at $10,000 in annual savings per year. We are talking almost an extra, gosh, $900 a year or a month, eight to $900 extra a month for you guys to put in the market, to put in your savings account, to invest in your child's 529, to invest in that IRA, that 401k, to put yourself in a better personal finance situation, to pay off that high debt, high rate debt that you might have. Again, let me know if that resonates with you. Let me know if that makes sense. But the key here is, is you know, if you focus on the savings first, because if you don't have your habits and saving, you can earn as much as possible. But if you spend it all, if you spend more than you actually earn, earning more is not going to help you. So if you develop these strong habits, keep your eye on the cost to make sure that that stays where it should be, then you could focus on making more money because then you know that it's all going to go towards building that asset, towards building that passive income, guys. So let me know how much this could help you. Again, some links are in the description. Like my Google FI you know, phone plan is in there. Feel free to use Policy Genius to shop your insurance around. That's in my description as well. I want you guys to be able to have as much money, to invest as much money, so you can have as much money when you want to reach financial freedom, guys. So don't forget to like this video. Definitely subscribe to this channel. Thanks for rocking with me, and I'll catch you on the next one.